Good day, welcome to the Vaga School Online Classes for Excess One Science. Today we'll be doing biology and under biology. We'll be talking about microorganisms and health. So before we we'll go further, let's learn about the control of harmful microorganisms. And the control of microorganisms include high temperature. This involves sterilization by boiling or to cleaving or eating of food and other products to kill disease causing microorganisms as they are killed at high temperatures. So we use high temperature to sterilize, that means to clean our food and other products of disease causing microorganisms. We also use drugs or antibiotics. Many diseases can be controlled by taking of drugs or antibiotics in order to kill microorganisms. Preserving food by salting. This is the application of salt on food to kill microorganisms or render them inactive. So they use salt to preserve food. By pre in order for it to preserve it, it must kill the microorganisms presence or render them inactive. We have the fourth one, immunization or vaccination. Immunization is a process by which a healthy person is inoculated with the, pre with the preparation of milk form of pathogen. This preparation is called vaccine. Vaccination is given to protect against deadly diseases, especially those caused by viruses such as measles, tuberculosis, cholera, and tetanus. So, immunization is when a person is being injected with a preparation of a mute form of a pathogen. Let's take the measles, for example. The pathogen of measles, but in the mute form, that means the active active particle present in that measles causing measles pathogen it has been removed so the remaining part is now introduced into the body so the body will now fight against it and in fighting against it the body will now have something in case if the real disease or the real measles comes into the body and we have immunity immunity is the ability of the body to resist infections or diseases by producing antibodies. So these antibodies are what that provide are the ones who provide immunity for the body. And we have five sterilization by boiling. Sterilization by boiling is done is done to kill disease causing microorganisms pathogens on the object. So when you have an object like a clipper in barber shop, when they want to, they you see the either. They use their lighter to light up, then they burn, they use this spray, they use the fire, to, they spray the fire around on the blade of the clipper. This is just to kill microorganisms, so it will not be passing, so the clipper will not be passing one microorganism to another in case of ringworm. So they will kill the bacteria causing microorganisms there in order to not pass it to the next customer. Then we have the use of antiseptics. These are chemicals that can kill or inhibit pathogenic microorganisms. Antiseptics are used on hot abrasions, wounds on the skin to prevent infection by microorganisms. The antiseptics, the, our soap, our um, hand sanitizers, we use them to prevent infection by microorganisms. Quarantine services. Quarantine services or isolation of infected person or animal alone should be done. This is to observe such person for evidence of a disease before he or it mixed with the general population. Yes, if you should hear all these corona advertisement on the radio to say that a person who is just coming from a place where there's corona to quarantine himself, meaning that he has to stay in the place alone, then they will now observe whether is now whether the person is giving symptoms of the disease or the person is free to go and mix with the general population. Use of disinfectants, disinfectants such as Isa, Sanitas, Lysol, Carbonic Acid should be used regularly to prevent infection by microorganisms. How can a person be immune to a disease? A person can be immune to a disease in two major ways. We have the naturally acquired immunity or the artificially acquired immunity. If one suffers from a disease, the person's body produces antibodies, antibodies which provide the immunity of the, for the body, which remain in the body to combat any reoccurrence of such disease in the future. Then we have artificial acquired immunity. Vaccines 
made from milk strain of the, of the disease are injected into the body, person's body. This stimulates the person's body to produce necessary antibodies, which prevent the invasion of strong of stronger strain of the disease. So yellow fever now is the example used. So example if we are using yellow fever, they introduce the milk form of this yellow fever into the person's body, which will stu- stimulate the necessary antibodies, which will now prevent the invasion of the stronger form of yellow fever. So that's what vaccination is all about. Then these are the list of diseases which babies are immunized. Diphtheria, whooping cough, tetanus, polio or poliomyelitis, tuberculosis, and measles. The babies are immunized against this disease in order to provide their body and in order to make the antibodies know with, to prevent further effects of this disease in babies because the immunity is not that strong or has not adapted to this type of disease. So they are now being immunized. Then we have control of vectors. So control of vectors, as we know, vectors is an animal. A vector is an animal which transmits a disease person organism from the victim to that to the, of that disease to another person. We have control of mosquitoes, such as so we control of mosquito. Mosquito is a vector. So we have draining of swamp. That means all those uh, soak aways present in the street or or whatever or uh, we got like gutter. So draining of all those gutter prevents breeding of mosquitoes, clearing of bushes around the house, sleeping in the room protected by mosquito nets, spraying swamp or rooms with insecticide, spraying oil or stagnant water. When you spray oil or stagnant water, the poop up of mosquito or the it will sink, the oil will make it sink deep into the water, thereby killing it. We have burying of bo- broken pots or empty cans. Yes, they, they will use empty cans or pro- of um, broken pots for breathing and we have education or enlightenment. When you enlighten people on the culture of mosquitoes, it helps in preventing the spread of malaria or other diseases carried by mosquitoes. We have control of house flies, we have spraying with insecticides, destruction of breeding materials, keeping environment clean, using of poison baits, closing of pit toilets, and closing of food. So when we control the house flies, we control the spread of cholera. So that's how we control this. Then we have control of black fire, which causes blindness. We have clearing of bushes around the house, fumigation with insecticide, destruction of breeding spots, proper monitoring of water bodies, and use of drugs. So these are the way we can control black fly and the disease it carries, known as river blindness. So maintenance of good health. For a person to remain healthy, he must maintain cleanliness around his environment. He must eat good food, drink clean and pure water, wear clean clothes. Keep his environment tidy. So this method helps a lot in preventing disease outbreak. However, keeping the environment clean is not only the sole responsibility of single individuals. It involves the combined effort of household, communities, nations, and the world as well. So, for the maintenance of good health, the communities, the households, the nations, and the world as a whole were all involved in order to have. Good maintenance of good health. So let's till we meet in the next class. Thanks for watching, and we'll explain more on how each and every household, um, countries, na- na- communities, and and the world as a whole. How we all contribute to maintenance of good health. Let's watch till we meet in the next class. Like and subscribe to this channel. Contact us on the number given and visit our website scholarsinversalschool.com to learn more about us. Thank you for your participation.